Okay, there's the Soldiers and Sailors building, and that's University of Pittsburgh, the, the Panther Lion football team mascot. And so this is going to be um, Gingy Good Earth. Welcome on January 18th to the Gingy Good Earth show. This is going to be uh, Liberty 3, and this will be Part G, the Gingy Good Earth show for the American peoples and the international peoples of the world. And basically, I'm just reading and trying to read the Universal History of the United States of America. So, we just finished with talking about the Polish gentleman, Count Pulaski. And Pulaski is another name for Poland. The fact that Lord Howe was now ordered into Delaware and his communication with the ocean might remain secure. While the fleet was thus employed, Washington attempted to cut off the main body of the British army and camped at Germantown, seven miles from the city. The attack was well concerted and executed promptly. The British were completely surprised at break of day. October 4th, at sunrise, the action became warm and the Americans were successful at all points until they attempted to dislodge a battalion of the British who in their flight had thrown themselves into a stone house. This occasioned a delay, broke the pursuit, and gave the enemy time to recover from the surprise and rally to the charge. The action soon became warm and bloody. A thick fog arose which covered the combatants and caused some confusion the enemy took advantage of this. The Americans retired and abandoned the victory they had so fairly gained. The loss of the parties were about equal, but it proved a lesson of caution to General Howe. He collected his army at Philadelphia, where he was closely invested by General Washington through the winter, which occasioned the remark of Dr. Franklin, the Philadelphia has taken how. The privations of the American army were truly distressing. Without clothes, shoes, stockings, and even breeches and blankets, more than 2,000 were marched through the snow, imprinting the roads with their blood-stained steps. Yet all this was endured with a firmness worthy of those valiant sons of liberty. Dr. Benjamin Franklin had now been more than a year in France, urging the government of that country to acknowledge our independence and to enter into a treaty of alliance. These objects were effected after the fall of Bragona had manifested the probability that Americans could maintain their independent stand single-handed. A treaty was signed on the 6th of February, by which it was agreed that neither of the contracting powers was to make war or peace without the formal consent of the other. The treaty was soon known in London, and the British government determined to evacuate Philadelphia and concentrate the world forces in New York. On the 18th of June, the Royal Army crossed the Delaware on the road to New York, but Washington had foreseen this and prepared the militia of New Jersey to give the British a troublesome march. He crossed the Delaware in pursuit, and on the hostile armies met the mammoth on the 28th, 64 miles from Philadelphia. The contest was severe, and the weather was so hot the numbers on both armies perished from that cause and the use of water when it could be obtained. The American army remained on the battleground intending to renew the contest in the morning, but the enemy made good a retreat. The loss of 
the Americans was eight officers and 61 privates killed and 160 wounded. The British loss in killed, wounded, and missing was 350 men, including officers. 100 prisoners were taken, and the loss by desertion was 1,000. Sir Henry retired by forced marches to Sandy Hook, where he was taken on board the fleet and embarked the army for New York. General Lee has been cens censored by the court-martial for disobedience of others on this occasion, and today is General Lee's birthday, January 18th. Happy birthday, General Lee. It appears that he first declined a particular command and then asked for it. Washington directed him to commence the attack unless there should be powerful reasons to the contrary, and his disobedience and doubtful movements appeared to have marred the expected success and justified the event in depriving him of his command. The French government, by the terms of the treaty, had now entered into war. On the 8th of July, Count de Estenging entered the Capes of the Delaware with Toulon fleet. After a passage of 87 days, Lord Howe had been gone only 11 days, and Sir Henry Clinton had evacuated Philadelphia only one month before and was now embarking his army at Sandy Hook for New York. The French fleet was about double the force of the English, both in the number of ships and weight of metal. Count de Estangy landed Mr. Gerard, French Minister of the United States, who was most cordially received by Congress, and on the ninth set sail for Sandy Hook, where he arrived on the 11th and blockaded the English squadron in the harbor. The Count made all possible efforts to attack the English fleet in the harbor, but found it impracticable to cross the bar with his heavy ships, and on the 22nd agreeable to advice from General Washington. He set sail for Newport to cooperate in the destruction of the British fleet and army at Rhode Island, and Newport, Rhode Island is a beautiful seaport. I love Newport. I love Newport Beach, too. That's in California. Admiral Barron's squadron arrived at Sandy Hook a few days after the departure of the French fleet in very broken, sickly, dismasted, distressed situation. The provision ships from Cork arrived also and entered the harbor of New York in safety to the inexpressible joy of the British Army, who were in great want of supplies. Count de Estanging arrived off Point Judith on the 29th of July, and such was the joy upon the occasion that it diffused the fire and zeal of 1775 and 1776 throughout New England, Volunteers by thousands flocked to the standard of their country to join General Sullivan and cooperate with their illustrious allies in the reduction of Rhode Island. General Washington had detached the Marquis Lafayette and General Green with 2,000 men to join the General Enterprise. The American force was now about 10,000 strong. Sir Robert Pigot, and commanded at Newport, had been reinforced with five battalions, which rendered his force about 6,000 strong. Thus balanced, the parties commenced their operations. The Count de Estanging entered the harbor of Newport on the 18th of August. Without opposition, General Pigot, having destroyed the English shipping on the 5th to prevent their falling into the hands of the French. On the ninth at eight in the morning, General Sullivan began to cross over with his army from Tiverton, the enemy having abandoned their works at the north end of the island. At two in the morning, Lord Howe appeared off Point Judith with the fleet of 25 sail of the line where he anchored for the night. 
And I believe whatever happens in Washington, D.C. on January 18, 2021, throughout this week, it's going to happen in the wee hours of the night. So, I'm trying to stay up and watch out for, like, news briefs or news breaks or important um, newscasters wanting to come out and tell us what is going on. So, relying on truth and journalism is so important this week regarding the inauguration on the 20th of 2021. So there you have it. The English shipping on the 5th to prevent their falling into the hands of the French. On the 9th at 8 in the morning, General Sullivan began to cross over with his army from Tiverton. The enemy have abandoning their works at the north end of the island. At 2 in the morning, Lord Howell appeared off Point Judith with a fleet of 25 sail of the line, where he anchored for the night. On the 10th, Count de Estengi, eager to meet the British fleet, took advantage of the wind and put to sea. The two fleets maneuvered through the day without coming to action. On the 11th, a violent gale sprang up and continued through the 12th and 13th, which parted the fleets dismasted the French admiral ship, destroyed her rudder, and greatly damaged several others. And just thinking about how, you know, information that we're finding out, a red tsunami wave and all of this, I wrote a poem on the tsunami of the Christmas, March, December 24th, 2004 tsunami. And on one of my um, video programs, I read the poem aloud, Tsunami. So you can look that up. I have over a hundred videos on my Gingy Good Earth program show, and I wrote a uh, lengthy poem on what is a tsunami. So look that up, and maybe you can apply it to history happening in 2021. Okay, so anyway, um, destroyed her rudder and greatly damaged several others just from a wind gale. So, you know, the elements of the weather are so important when there's conflict and war throughout history. On the 14th, the gale abated and close and severe actions commenced between several single ships of the two fleets, but nothing decisive. The Count, having collected six of his ships, covered his disabled fleet and stood in for Newport and came to anchor. General Green, with the ending in E, and the Marquis Lafayette went on board the Admiral's ship and pressed him to enter the harbor of Newport and complete the enterprise. But the fleet was so shattered by the storm and the officers were generally so adverse that the Count concluded to sail for Boston. The troops under General Sullivan had gained the north end of the island and marched down upon the enemy's lines, ready to cooperate with the French fleet and commence the attack. But their sufferings in the storm were so severe that the troops were in a deplorable state. On the 15th, the American army had recovered from their misfortunes and were again prepared for action. In this situation, they continued anxiously waiting the movements of the French fleet to join in the general attack. But to their grief and astonishment, they saw them weigh and stand off for Boston on the 24th. The mortification of General Sullivan was greater than the pride of the American soldier could sustain, and he expressed himself unguardedly in general orders on this occasion. On the 28th, Count de Estengen wrote in Congress from Boston and explained his movements to the satisfaction of the honorable body. General Sullivan soon saw himself abandoned by most 
of the volunteers which reduced his army to a standard below the enemy, and he hastened to secure his retreat. On the 25th, General Sullivan sent off his heavy cannon, and on the 29th he retired to the north end of the island. General Pagot pursued with his whole, bo whole force to intercept his retreat. The advance guard of the enemy was soon engaged with the rear guard of the Americans, and severe action ensued that continued through the day. The next day, General Sullivan learned that Lord expected to return to Newport, and he hastened to evacuate the island. General Sullivan, with the advice and assistance of General Green and the Marcus Lafayette, conducted his retreat in the presence of superior foe. Whose sentries were not more than 400 yards distant from the American sentries, and on the morning of the 1st of September, 1778, the retreat was accomplished without the loss of the man or any part of artillery or baggage. The same day, Sir Henry Clinton arrived off Newport on board of the fleet under Lord Howe and 4,000 troops to cut off the American retreat, but learning the departure of the French for Boston and the retreat of the Americans, he set sail for Boston in pursuit of the French. On the morning of the 3rd, he discovered the French fleet in the harbor of Boston, strongly posted, and returned to New York. On the 5th, Lord Howe commenced an attack upon the American shipping in Bedford Harbor and destroyed about 70 cell, besides small craft, stores, dwelling houses, and vessels on the stocks, together with a magazine to the amount of 20,000 sterling. His lordship next commenced an attack upon Martha's Vineyard, destroyed all the vessels, and carried off the arms of the militia and public money, 300 oxen and 10,000 sheep, and returned to New York. The following extract of a letter from General Washington shall close the chapter. It is not a little pleasing nor less wonderful to contemplate that after two years maneuvering and undergoing the strangest vicissitudes that perhaps ever attended any one contest since the creation, both armies are brought back to the very point they set out from, and the offending party in the beginning is reduced to the spade and pickaxe for defense. The hand of providence has been so conspicuous in all of this that he must be worse than an infidel that lacks faith and more than wicked that has not gratitude enough to acknowledge his obligations. Chapter 10, Operations of the Revolutionary War Continued. The British, finding the instability of their dependence on the success of their arms, determined to accomplish their object by the arts of diplomacy. An attempt was made to bribe a Mr. Reed and other members of Congress to assist in reconciling the Americans to English government. The instrument of this attempt was George Johnston, Esquire, one of the British commissioners. Mr. Reed replied, I'm not worth buying. But such as I am, the King of England is not rich enough to do it. The facts were disclosed to, con to Congress and excited considerable feelings. And we recently had the Lincoln Accord uh, brought about and accomplished by diplomacy by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Pompeo, Pompeo. Pompeo, and again, presidential president, Donald J. Trump. So that was accomplished, and Morocco gave the highest award to presidential president, Donald J. Trump, for uh, peace in that region of Morocco, Northern Africa,
you're going to have to look it up. I, right now I'm just going to keep reading, but I just wanted to touch on that. I am the King of England is not rich enough to do it. The facts were disclosed to Congress and excited considerable feelings. Congress then resolved that all letters addressed to members of Congress by British commissioners or agents or any subjects of the King of Great Britain of a public nature should be laid before that body. To this resolution, a spirited reply was made from New York by John Stinton and a total disavowal of the facts on the part of Sir Henry Clinton, Lord Carlisle, and Mr. Eden. At the same time, a ratification of the Convention of Saratoga was tendered that the troops of Bergona might be suffered to embark for England. Thus was declined by Congress unless ratified by the British government. So... Let's go on to the next page. I'm reading in the dark with candlelight, so I apologize for uh, not having good pronunciation because um, I'm reading the book for the first time and we're going along. We're on page 200. The commissioners then appealed to the people, and this was favored by Congress, trusting that the good sense of the inhabitants would treat it with contempt and cover the authors with lasting disgrace. Chagrined by their failure in this insidious measure, they denounced the American government in a manifesto threatening the American people with destruction if determined to persevere in their rebellion and adhere to their allegiance with France. This idle threat was fairly met by Congress by a development of the mode of warfare adopted by the enemy and was thus concluded if quote if our enemies presume to execute their threats or persist in their present career of barbarity we will take such exemplary vengeance as shall deter others from a like conduct we appeal to that god who is the searcher of hearts for the rectitude of our intentions and in his holy presence declare that as we are not moved by any light or hasty suggestions of anger or revenge so through every possible change of fortune we will adhere to his to this our determination dr franklin till now a commissioner at the french court was appointed minister plenipotentiary to the court of Versailles with instructions to negotiate for an expedition to Canada. About this time, the Sorel Gerard delivered his credentials to Congress and was recognized as a minister from the French court. The Marquess Lafayette at this time requested leave to return to France, to which Congress readily consented and directed the president to express to him by letter the thanks of congress for that disinterested zeal that led him to america as well as those services